Richland County Sheriff's deputies need 15-year-old Kara Robinson's help to find the apartment where she was held captive for 18 horrifying hours and find the man who did it. Crawford's apartment is a pretty big apartment complex and time was of the essence. Although Kara can't remember exactly which apartment, after she describes the kidnapper physically and the red hair she saw in a brush, the complex manager leads investigators right to the monster's front door. It was his apartment that he shared with his wife. But by the time cops arrive, the man is gone. What happened? He'd woken up and realized that he had to get out of there. But the clues Kara's abductor leaves behind, abundant, and vital. Investigators learn his identity. The man's name, Richard Mark Evonitz. Had you ever heard of Richard Evonitz before? No, we had not heard of, of Richard Evonitz. He was not on our radar at all. Deputies get a search warrant and go through every inch of Evonitz's apartment. We began to gather information about where he worked. He got some cellular telephone records, uh, different cars he had access to. Then, investigators find in a metal footlocker a clue to a potentially even more sinister past. One of the things in that footlocker was a newspaper from Spotsylvania, Virginia, and the headline was that these two sisters' bodies had been located in a river there. And that was pretty telling based on the circumstances involving Kara, him having that newspaper. Had Ivanitz done this before? Deputies call in the FBI. The manhunt is on. The clock is ticking. Cops track down Ivonitz's family. Turns out his wife and mother are on vacation, unaware of what had been going on back at home. The incident with Kara, he chose that particular time because his wife and his mother had left to go to Disney World. Shell-shocked, the family agrees to meet with authorities. During that meeting, uh, a sister wanted to speak to the detectives privately, and she was able to give us significant information about where Ivonitz was. He had reached out to her. She indicated he was in a motel about 30, uh, 40 minutes away. So we immediately dispatched a team. I went to that location myself, and we ultimately uh, hit the room, and he was gone. Had Ivonitz been tipped off? We basically had a serial killer on the loose at this point in time. We had a, a dangerous individual. We believed he was armed. I received word that his phone was in the Jacksonville, Florida area, so we knew he was heading south. Cops spot him, and a high-speed chase ensues. We received word that he had been stopped in Sarasota, Florida. Ivonitz pulls a gun. He did not comply with police commands. A canine was sent to the car. Ivonitz puts the gun in his mouth and pulls the trigger. When Kara hears her kidnapper and rapist committed suicide, there's anger. How did you feel about it? I was just kind of kind of mad that he sort of got the easy way out. And surprisingly, a tinge of disappointment. I remember just hoping that they could catch up with them because I wanted to have my day in court across from him. I wanted him to look at me across a courtroom and know that choosing me, that was his biggest mistake. And after that, it was just case closed. Well, it was case closed as far as Kara's case, however, um, based on the find in the in the Foot Locker and starting to piece together Mr. Ivanitz's background, well, this investigation wasn't 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 done yet at all. Uh, and we were able to forensically link Ivanitz to the disappearance and murder of the two sisters in Spotsylvania. It was the unsolved case of 15-year-old Kristen and 12-year-old Katie Lisk, abducted from their front lawn and murdered by Ivanitz. And shockingly, cops were also able to link Ivonitz to another cold case in the same county, the abduction and murder of 16-year-old Sophia Silva. We don't have too many serial killers, serial rapists um, that come onto our radar. Um, that's what Ivonitz was. Reportedly, fibers from Ivonitz's furry handcuffs used on Kara were also found on the three other girls. And unbelievably, Kristen Lisk's palm and fingerprints were found on the inside of Ivonitz's trunk five years after her abduction. Some wonder, are there others? What did you think when you found out about his history? I mean, because he was... He was a serial murderer. I was not even remotely surprised. You know, he was so calm and he was so calculated and 
and so prepared that there was no sense of surprise that he had done this before. Having learned about the other girls he kidnapped and murdered, do you feel confident that had Kara not escaped and essentially saved herself that she too would have been murdered There's ultimately? There's no doubt in my mind. Kara Robinson had been through hell. It was time for the healing to begin. There was one person in particular who would play an instrumental role in that recovery, Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott. Shortly after her kidnapping, um, I met with her and her family in my office. She was a survivor and she was a fighter and she was a warrior and she wasn't going to be a victim. He sort of immediately took me under his wing and treated me like a family member. I've got um, daughters myself and I just kind of adopted her as one of my daughters too and, and wanted to make sure that she continued to be in that survivor. And so we bonded. So when Kara went looking for a summer job, Sheriff Lott had an idea. He was like, well, you can come work at the Sheriff's Department if you want. And so I started doing administrative work for a couple of years. I did it through college. In college, Kara was studying to become a teacher, but loved working at the Sheriff's Department. So she decided to combine her two passions and become a school resource officer. Best merge, of both worlds. Right, and merge the gap that blends the best of both worlds. While a cadet at the police academy, Kara had managed to keep her story close to the vest. That is, until the day her cover would be blown. I was actually in class at the academy, and the, the instructor started teaching on my case. Oh my god. And one of the first slides was a picture of Kristen and Katie Lisk and Sophia Silva. And I saw it, and I just went, oh no. <laughs> and so at the end of the class, I went up to her, and I said, I just want you to know that Kara is me. <laughs> and her face just turned blood red. And she was just like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. So at that point, she then told other people in the academy leadership. And they came to me and they were like, we want to nominate you for an award at the academy. And then I was given an award for courage and bravery at the academy at my graduation. So well, that's amazing. Today, Kara is married and has taken some time off from the sheriff's department to raise her two small boys. She says she made the decision the moment she was abducted and from that point on to never be a victim. She's a survivor. I think that to say you're a victim, then someone took something from you. Nothing was taken from me. I refuse to give that man that power. But I wonder, has it changed who you are? I will say that I am who I am because of what happened to me but it did not make me who I am. I'm sure you can relate. Like, you obviously would not be sitting in front of me doing this job, right? You are right. <laughs> <laughs> if what had happened to you did not happen. So, you know, I am who I am because of what happened to me, sure. But it doesn't define who I am by any means. I think that was perfectly stated. <laughs> Thank you. One more note about the footlocker deputies found at the home of Richard Ivanitz. Investigators say along with the newspaper headlines about the abductions, they also found detailed notes that he wrote to himself while carefully planning the abductions, as well as the pressed white button-down shirt he wore during his attacks. His wife told deputies she had always wondered what was inside, but her husband forbid her from ever opening it up. I'm Chris Hansen. If you like this story, make sure you tune in every day to Crime Watch Daily. You can find where the show airs in your city at CrimeWatchDaily.com. Watch it live or record it on your DVR and watch it at night. And to all those criminals out there, remember, we are watching. <laughs>